want to talk about the situation in Ukraine. I'm now joined live from Washington by Daniel McAdams. He's the executive director of the Ron Paul Institute. Sir, thanks for being with us. And the US has repeatedly uh, praised Kiev. We're going to hear it again in a minute for showing restraint in trying to de-escalate the situation. Yet we all saw what happened in Odessa and what looks like was allowed to happen. How do those things tally up? Well, it's interesting because in Kiev, not that many months ago, a couple of months uh, to be exact, unarmed police forces uh, were set out against violent protesters and the U.S. government, including the president and secretary of state, said they were, quote, disgusted by the show of force against these protesters. And you see in Ukraine, it's obvious that the, the government in Kiev is using the military against its own citizens. It's blockading cities, starving people out. This is exactly what the U.S. has used as a pretext for attack in places like Libya and elsewhere. Mm. So the hypocrisy of the of the U.S. side is absolutely stunning. And even up until less than an hour ago, we had Mary Half there from the State Department again praising Ukraine's, as they're calling it, restraint, their good judgment. Let's listen into that clip a second. Bear, bear with me. We're coming straight back. We're going to take a listen. We have clearly said the Ukrainian government has showed great restraint in the face of overwhelming challenges, but that they also have a responsibility to maintain law and order for their own people. Uh, I think that's probably as much as I want to say on that. And that the but onus really is on the Russian government to pull back, to pull their folks out of eastern Ukraine and to take de-escalatory steps as we move towards the elections which uh, need to happen on the 25th. But well, you heard what she had to say. What do you think about that? <laughs> You have to wonder what reality these people are occupying. I mean, they, they tried to pull a fast one, the State Department did, a couple of weeks ago when they put out these phony photos of what they claimed were Russian forces in Ukraine. The person who took the pictures, as you know, said they're completely phony. Uh, New York Times was burned on the State Department's lies. Uh, to its credit, the New York Times actually sent some people into eastern Ukraine, and they reported just a couple of days ago that actually these militias don't contain any Russians whatsoever, and the people don't necessarily want to join Russia anyway. They're using old, worn-out weapons. Uh, so, so the State Department just continues uh, to pile lie upon lie, and it's, it's absolutely revolting. Well, let's try and find some little glimmer of light, maybe at the end of this long, dark tunnel. They're saying that the, the presidential elections at the end of this month should shine a little more light on it. Things should be better after that, no? Well, how can you run a presidential election when you're, the army is firing on its own people? You know, I've been in an election monitor many times in bad situations, and it's simply impossible. Likewise, I'm afraid to say these referendums will simp uh, in the East will simply be ignored by the U.S., whereas if the result that's desired comes out of the presidential elections, the U.S. will say, and the OSCE will say, it's uh, wonderfully democratic. We saw, we've seen so graphically just in the last hour, one little snapshot again of the tragedy that's going on there. We saw a 30-year-old woman shot, we saw a family crying in the background. Any death, it's horrendous for the family, the friends of everyone there. We're still hearing at the same time America um, calling on the, the, the people in the East there to lay down their arms. At the same time, they're backing uh, the interim Kiev government, going and cracking down here. How does it add up? They're calling for one thing and yet doing another. Well, you see already there's reports in the German press over the weekend that the U.S. CIA and FBI have sent in at least a couple of dozen people to advise the Ukrainian government on how to crack down. Perhaps they were advising them on assassination techniques and these sorts of things. One never knows. Daniel, thank you for your time. Daniel McAdams there, Executive Director at Ron Paul Institute. Thank you in Washington.